welcome, welcome. Our quick 30 minute class is all about the root chakra. So grab a strap and maybe a blanket. Join me on the mat. We're going to meet on our backs, knees bent, pads of the feet planted, just like we like. All right. <laughs> Once you find your spot, really allow your body to settle in. Keep the strap handy if you're using one today. Know that everything that we do can be done without a strap, but it's a wonderful tool to have to create a new level of awareness in our body and our mind. So I encourage you to explore it if you haven't yet. But from wherever you are, simply begin to notice the weight of your body press down through the earth. Feel the weight of your body press down through the shoulders, the shoulder blades and the backs of the arms. Can you soften them? any deeper into the earth that cradles them. Following the length of your spine down to the hips and the low back. Can you take a deep breath into the belly? And then as you exhale, let the low belly melt along with the hips, soften through the thighs. Feel the weight of your legs pressing down through the pads of your feet. You have arrived. You are here. Our practice this morning is all about the root chakra and the root chakra located at the very base of the spine near the tailbone is all about I am. That is the mantra of the root chakra. So this morning as you lay here, you might find your own root chakra mantra. And maybe it's as simple as I am or I am here. These affirmations aren't complicated, but they are powerful. It might be something like I am healing. I am joyful, I am powerful, I am alive. So take a moment, find your I am. Maybe you are all of those things. And your mantra today is simply claiming what you are. As you repeat your mantra or mantras to yourself, on the inhale, think I am. On the exhale, you might complete your mantra, but allow the breaths to be deep and full, deep and full. On your next inhale, we'll move the body, sweeping the arms up overhead. And as you exhale, rest the back of your hands against the earth. Let the arms soften. Feel the heart center open here. Just a gentle opening. You might remain like this as you breathe, or you might find some movement with your breath. On an exhale, sweeping the arms back down from where they came, pressing through the fingertips as you do. Inhale, open those arms back up until the backs of the hands rest on the earth. So we're warming up the shoulders, gently opening up the heart. Pressing through the fingertips each time we sweep those hands, moving at the pace of our breath, whatever that looks like in your body this morning or afternoon or evening. <laughs> Beautiful. Make this last one big and exaggerated. Make it really count as you press through those fingertips. And then let the arms and hands rest overhead and relax. Let's find Bananasana. 
a little uh, lateral extension and flexion for the spine. So we'll take our right wrist or forearm in our left hand and then gently begin to pull that right arm over to the left. And as you do, you're gonna shimmy the shoulders and the head towards the left as well. The hips and the feet stay where they are. We're just doing a little side crunch here on the left side of our body, feeling it shorten on up. And then now notice how the right side of the body has lengthened. Can you soften into that length by just relaxing the right side of the body long? And then to really get into it, go ahead and extend that right leg, press through the heel, slowly lower it on down towards the earth. Notice how extending that leg changes the sensations that you feel along the right side of the body. Can you feel the side stretch, this length a little more intensely? Do your muscles feel a little tighter? Can we soften anywhere the body will let us here? And then if we really want to bring length to the right side of the body, you might try pressing down through the pad of this left foot. As you do, this left hip is going to start to shift up towards the sky. And you can use that pressure to really stretch long through the right side of the body. So you might try it out. Notice how it feels in your body. Some folks find this uh, not enjoyable. And all the difference is, is just our anatomical makeup. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Nothing wrong with the body. We do our best yoga when we listen and honor our personal physical forms, trusting ourselves over anyone else in the room or in our heads. <laughs> all right. From here, release that left hip down. Slide those shoulders back up. Bend that right knee. Let's find Bananasana on the opposite side, shimmying those head and the shoulders over towards the right. Until you find your spot and then begin relaxing into it, inviting the length to the left side of the body. You might even send your breath deep into the left side of your rib cage, the inhale, helping to expand the ribs, the exhale, allowing an even deeper softening on the left side of the body. And then let's extend that left leg out, press through the heel, slowly lower it on down. Invite that length into the body. Let the left side of your body soften into this stretch. Can you relax a little through the armpit? And then if you'd like, you might press into the pad of that right foot. Really stretch long into the left side of the body for as long as you like. For as long as feels good. And then when you're ready, release that hip on down. Let's slide back up to neutral. Wonderful. This is where we're going to grab a strap if you'd like it. I'm always going to model straps for y'all. <laughs> just because I think we need to see it more often. But we're going to get into the ankles, the knees, and the hips. So press down through the pad of the right foot, lift the left knee towards the sky. And this might just be where you grab the outside of your thigh. This might be where you place a strap behind the thigh. But from here, let's find some big ankle circles one way. Big and exaggerated. And then the other way. And then let's do the same with the point and the flex. Can we make them big and exaggerated, really flexing the toe away from the body, really <sighs> pressing that heel as you flex the toes towards the heart back and forth. Nice little nerve floss here. And then maybe shake the ankle out just a little bit, right? From here, let's find some rotations with the knee. Now the knee is a hinge joint, it just goes up and down, but we can very delicately by pointing our toe, explore tiny circles. So with the tip of your toe, you're gonna draw 
I don't know, tea saucer, maybe salad plate. I'm this is dinnerware talk here, <laughs> the circles. But go ahead and draw them. And you're really going to want to use the strap or your hand to stabilize the thigh because the knee is going to want to go all over the place. So these little circles and then reverse those circles with the knee. Beautiful. From here, bend the knee. We're gonna do these circles with the hip. Now you might use the strap as an assist here, but with the tip of your knee, begin to draw circles. And you might pick a circle size that feels comfortable to you. And then my encouragement is let those circles grow. Let them get bigger and wider, really exploring that hip socket. And if you'd like a challenge, you might lengthen the leg and point the toe instead, drawing hip or drawing these hip circles with your toe instead of your knee. Now a strap assist with this looks like this. We're just giving our leg a little help here as we're drawing these big, rich hip circles. From wherever you are, let's switch directions. Hip circles the opposite way. If it feels weird in the body and for the brain, this is natural. We tend to choose ease, right? We tend to choose drawing circles in the way that is easiest for our brain first. So when we reverse them, we just let it be messy, right? Let it be a little awkward, let it not feel as fluid, just invite it in, know what's gonna happen and let it be okay. All right, from wherever you are, we're gonna extend our leg up towards the ceiling, pressing through the heel this time. You're gonna check on that right knee. We wanna ensure that it's pointed up towards the ceiling and not falling out towards the side. And then from here, we're slowly going to lower that left heel down towards the earth, keeping the leg extended. And again, we can use the strap for an assist. We can release the strap. But once that leg is extended all the way, we're just going to soften through this front left hip flexor. Continuing to press through that left heel, flex the toes up towards the heart and soften through the front left side of the body. We can uh, have some Bananasana flashbacks if you'd like by sweeping the arms up overhead, <laughs> pressing through the fingers as you press out through the heel and then go ahead and bend that left knee. Let's switch sides. So pressing through the pad of that left foot, we're gonna lift this right knee up, starting our ankle circles, letting them be big, exploring the full range of motion of our ankle in one direction and then the other. And then those big exaggerated pointing and flexing of the foot. How hard can you point those toes? Can you press through the heel just as firmly back and forth? back and forth. All right, really loving on those ankles this morning. And then brace either the outside of the right thigh or grab your strap. Let's point the toe and start our little knee circles. It's nice to give the knee this strong foundation of being held by the strap or the hand so that it stays still. And we're not overextending this joint in any way. Go ahead and reverse those circles. Beautiful. Let's do this twice more. And then find your bend in the knee. Start those hip circles in whichever direction delights you. Let them grow big or at least bigger and bigger. <laughs> if you'd like, you might extend the leg, point through the toe. I'm gonna keep this knee bent on this side. Using your strap as much or as little as allows you 
to soften through the jaw and the tongue to let the shoulders anchor down towards the earth. And then from wherever you are, reverse those circles, nice and big, the opposite direction. Noticing, does this direction have the same ease and fluidity? Is it a little more awkward, maybe a little less awkward than drawing these circles the opposite direction? We just observe. And then when you're ready, extending your right leg up towards the sky, flexing through the heel, let's slowly lower that right heel down towards the earth. Once it's planted, again, we're softening through these right hip flexors. If you like sweeping the arms up overhead, pressing through that right heel as you press up through the fingertips, growing long through the whole of the body. Ah. And then when you're ready, bend that right knee. Let's find a twist here. We're going to invite our knees up in towards the chest. Now, a strap is awesome for this because you're just going to place it on the outsides of your shins. Invite your knees up in towards the chest as much as you can while leaving room for the breath in your belly. And then from here, we're going to start a gentle rock, just massaging the low back. Maybe you're grabbing the outsides of the thighs. Maybe you've got this lovely strap here but we're finding this big, beautiful rock, our low back massage, giving love to our adrenal glands. And then we'll turn this into a twist by letting both knees fall over towards the left. We're gonna tee our arms out wide. We might bend them at the elbows to protect our rotator cuffs, but we really want to open up our heart towards the sky for this twist. You might invite your neck into it by lifting the head, turning your gaze opposite the knees, and then letting the head nestle back down. You might hang out here. Your whole goal is to soften into this posture. And you might use your breath to assist you. Each inhale, fill the body deeply. Feel the belly stretch, the heart stretch. As you exhale, can you slow it down and begin to soften all of those parts of your body that were stretched by the breath? Can you let that softness trickle down into the low back, the low belly and the hips? Can you invite that softness to your shoulder blades, the length of your spine and your neck with each exhale here? And then if you wanna intensify this hip, I mean, if this twist haha, in the lower portion of the body, you might keep your inner thighs and your knees pinned and just extend the top leg long point through the toe. This is gonna further rotate the lower spine into this twist. Let's take three big belly breaths here. Each slow exhale, inviting the body to melt a little further. And then when you're ready, bend that top knee. We're going to roll back onto our backs. Let's find our rock once more. Breathe deep into the belly. <laughs> A bit of a reset from such a deep twist here. And then let your knees fall over towards the right. Tee the arms out wide. Maybe as the fullness of your body softens into this posture, you lift and turn the neck opposite the knees. If you do that, once you rest your head back down, soften to the length of your throat the tongue, the jaw. So often when we move and adjust the body, we retense. And so if you're making big adjustments, check into those areas once you're adjusted. Notice if you can bring a little softness. Maybe you're already taking those deep belly inhales. 
those slow melting exhales as you soften through the belly and the hips. If you want to extend the top leg long to intensify this twist in the low spine, go ahead and do that. Be where your body wants to be. And maybe today you just think I am and it is and it's enough. When we claim the I am's for ourselves, we help release any blockages in the root chakra. The root chakra Chakra in Sanskrit means wheel. And you might imagine a wheel of energy turning at the base of the spine near the tailbone. This wheel that spins this root chakra, the muladhara, is said to be responsible for your safety, your security, your self-confidence these perceptions that you cultivate from a young, young age. And so when we spend time with ourselves, feeling deeply into the body, letting ourselves be held by the firm foundation of the earth, when we find ourselves meditating on the I am, we're releasing that wheel to turn freely at the base of the spine. Energy moves through the body. Westernized science and Eastern medicine both agree. Stuck energy causes pain, disease, discomfort. Physically and emotionally. And so we learn to move energy through the body, through our breath, through our movement, and through our mantras. When you're ready, roll onto your back. That's a long time to spend in a twist. <sighs> Maybe rock it out. A little low back massage. And then let's come up into a seat. We're going to end our practice seated. It's unusual, but hey. It's Friday. You might grab the backs of your thighs and rock up or roll up, or you might roll over onto your side body and press up. If you're rocking up, let it be playful. Let it take some time. So you might rock up first try, but you might hang out for a while. Just explore the momentum of your legs. I think occasionally folks get nervous that they're going to fart, but you're home. Go for it. <laughs> We'll find ourselves in this easy seat here. Maybe legs are crossed. Maybe we widen the knees out to make room for the belly. You might also take this time to place a bolster or a blanket beneath your hips here to bring ease to the low back. But let's find a forward fold. Now the root chakra, forward folds are deeply grounding, honoring this chakra. So you might do it with legs crossed. For me this morning, I'm going to extend my legs out. It feels better to do a forward fold, forward fold that way, and I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm going to make room for my belly between my thighs. And then from whichever posture you've chosen, on an inhale, draw your breath up from the base of the spine, up from that root chakra. Let it pour out the top of your head. As you exhale, let the shoulders relax from the ears. On an inhale again, pull that energy, the breath, the prana up from the root chakra. Let it pour out the top of your head, bringing with it length. As you exhale, shoulders melt. Let's take a few more breaths like that, just imagining that we're pulling this energy up through the length of our spine, out the top of our head. And then exhale, melt everything but the length you've created. A few more breaths, feeling, envisioning that energy pour up through the length of your spine. And on your next exhale, you're going to invite your heart center to fall forward. 
neck remains neutral, just in gently inviting the heart. I want to continue to make space for my belly here. And then breathe. As you lean forward, as my legs are extended, I feel this along the backs of my legs. If your legs are crossed, you might be feeling this in the low back and the hips. But we just let the heart center fall forward. Maybe the arms fall forward as well, if that feels good. And then when you're ready, lower that head on down, relax through the neck. Ooh. My neck is tight today, y'all. Let the forehead hang heavy, relaxing any effort in the jaw, the throat. Let's walk our hands on over towards the right. Breathe deeply into the body. Notice how sensation has shifted and changed, walking your hands over to the side. And then walk your hands all the way over to the left. And as you settle here for a moment, you might again notice how sensation has shifted. Can you feel more sensation on the right or left side of your body now? Maybe you're feeling your weight press down more through your sit bone on the left side. We're just here to notice and observe. There is power in your mind's eye, your brain, observing your physical sensation, noting the nuances of how it changes and shifts. Walk the hands back to neutral. And then let's slowly curl up vertebra by vertebra. Let the head go last. Wonderful. All right. Let's end our practice with a deep vagal stimulation. This is one that I do all the time because this is one of the ones that I find to be the most deeply effective with the least amount of effort. <laughs> so when you're ready, you're going to take your left arm, sweep it up overhead. And you're going to let it plant on the right side of the face. You're going to invite your left ear to sink down towards your left shoulder. And as you do, notice the length you're creating on the right side of the neck here. You might even soften that right shoulder down as well. Just really inviting the sensation of length to the side of the neck. Again, we soften and release through the jaw, the tongue. And we breathe deep into the body. Now, maybe you want to take this a step further by blinking the eyes open, turning your gaze up towards the ceiling. We find a fixed point that engages the muscles around the eye. Just feeling a little tautness there, blinking as often as you need, as as you like. Breathing deep into the belly once more, relaxing into the length you're creating on the side of the neck. And then when you're ready, close your eyes, lift your hand from atop your head, and slowly let the head rise like a helium balloon that you just removed your hand from. The head slowly rises. Note sensation. Maybe there's an ache, a buzz a floating, a warmth, a coolness. Familiarize yourself with these descriptive words. Maybe you can think of some more. Taking time again to allow the brain to notice the body. When you're ready, sweep that right arm, or, uh, yeah, that right arm, excuse me, up and overhead, invite that right ear towards the right shoulder. And again, soften into the length on the left side of the neck. Breathe into the belly. We don't want to shallow our breath or hold it. 
We want to melt as much as possible into this deep vagal nerve stimulation. If you would like to, you might turn your gaze up towards the ceiling, finding once again the tightness around the eyes. And then holding that gaze, blinking as often as you like. Breathing length into the side of the neck, softening the shoulders down. You might even come back to your mantra, I am. I am healing. I am joyful. I am releasing myself. I am here. When you're ready, release the hand, let the head float upright, notice sensation in the body. Just take stock, not just of what you feel in your neck and your head, but maybe also what you feel in the belly. What do you feel in the low back and the hips from sitting here? Maybe it doesn't feel good, maybe it does. There's no wrong answer. We're here to bear witness to what is. We'll end our practice simply by bringing the palms together at the heart center in Anjali Mudra. On an inhale, you might feel your heart lift to meet the thumbs. As you exhale, maybe you take a gentle bow in the head. Our root chakra, our root chakra, our root chakra, man, if we're all not struggling <laughs> with our strong foundation right now, after all that we've been through collectively, after everything that I know we are in the midst of privately, boy, if we are not needing some time in this place, Thank you for meeting me here. You might take a moment to thank yourself for meeting you here. We are in desperate need of time spent with self, of bearing witness to our own experience without rush, without the need to perform, to produce, to be different. When we hold space for who we are, when we meet ourselves on the mat, we nurture our root chakra, finding ease, fluidity, turning that wheel, inviting the energy to flow more freely. <sighs> Thank you for practicing with me today. The light in me, the dark in me, sees the light and the dark in you. And there is room for both of them in us. And we are all the same, just trying our best to show up. <laughs>